Beloved in the Lord, I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I welcome you to our Wednesday midweek service. You are listening to Pastor Diodone Mazambi of the Hazel Promises Sanctuary, Johannesburg. The title of my message is a Holy Spirit encounter. I want you to know the Holy Spirit. I want you to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. The person of the Holy Spirit is the most unknown of the Godhead. But a close study of scriptures reveals that he has a distinct personality. He is not the father, he is not the son, but he is a distant personality. Beloved, we believe in one God who revealed himself in three persons. But each person of the Godhead has his specific action. Although all they work together in perfect harmony, in perfect cooperation, in perfect unity all the time. Let me just repeat this. Each person, each person of the Godhead has his specific function. Although they work all together in perfect harmony, in perfect cooperation, and perfect unity all the time. We found three edges or three dispensations where one person of the Godhead is the most on display. This does not mean that other persons are absent. In the Old Testament, we see the Father. It is God working for us. In the Gospels, we see Jesus, the Son of God. It is God living with us. Jesus promised us the Holy Spirit. So in the act of the apostles and the, epist the, the letters of Paul and others, we see the Holy Spirit carrying out the work of Jesus Christ in and through us. So we have three distinct dispensations. The old covenant, it is the Father working for his people. In the gospel, we see Jesus. It means God with us. But in the act of the apostles, in the epistles, and now it is the age of the Holy Spirit, which means the Holy Spirit is carrying out 
the work of Jesus in and through us. This is the dispensation we are living in. Through this dispensation, the Holy Spirit will glorify Jesus Christ by perfecting what he has started. So we expect to see Jesus and to see more of him in our daily life. So miracles should be a daily occurrence in the life of children of God. So allow me to speak about the Holy Spirit as a comforter. The Holy Spirit, the comforter. Go to John chapter 14, verse 18. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. I will not leave you destitute. I will come to you. So now imagine they've been living with Jesus for three years. He has been everything for them. He was the provider. He was the keeper. He was the protector. He was their problem solver. Now he is telling them, I will not leave you orphans. So it means I will not leave you destitute. I will come to you. John 14 verse 16, the Bible says, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another help, that he may abide with you forever. In other version, he says, I will give you another comfort. Another comfort. Another paraclete. So I will give you another comforter. I have been your comforter. But I will give you someone who is just like me, but he will do more for you. He will comfort you. John 16 verse 7. He said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, the comforter, the paraclete will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Imagine, he said, it is better for you. It is better for you that I go away. It is better for you that I'll go away. It is at your advantage. The one who's coming after me is like me. But he will do for you more than what I did. So the word comforter, I don't know how much that word comforts you. Or the word helper, I don't know how much that word can help you. I had comforter for many years. But I have to tell you that I didn't receive much comfort according to my standards, according to my understanding. So I think there was something wrong in my understanding of the word comforter. And it may be as well your problem. So what, who, who is a comforter? 
And what does it mean to comfort? John Wycliffe is the one who is responsible for this word comforter when he translated the Bible. But when you read other translations from John Wycliffe, you find that he translated Philippians 3, verse 13, by saying, I can do all things through Christ who comforts me. So you understand that the understanding of John Wycliffe of the word comfort is not what you and me we may be having today. Because Philippians 4 verse 13 is translated that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So comfort carries an idea of strength, an idea of power. So the Holy Spirit is the power of the Godhead. And the word power carries a broad spectrum significance in the Greek mind and the Hebrew mind that what we, we may know today. Power means mighty force to bring change. Power means ability to perform. Power means to revive. Power means abundance in possession. Power means resourcefulness. Power means dominion. So you, you found out that the word power has a broad significance that what, how, what we think in English, resource, wealth, substance, abundance, prevailing, to overcome, to dominate, good health, all those are encapsulated in this word of power. To have power is to be able. To have power is to make things possible. That is power. So the Holy Spirit, being God, has no limitations. And nothing can be too difficult for him. This power through the Holy Spirit to carry out change, to transform life, has been given to every believer through the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. Beloved, understand that the Holy Spirit is the author of the Word of God. If your life today is full of impossibility, you can trust the Holy Spirit you can agree with the word of God. And I promise you, you will see change. The word of God carries the power of God. The word of God is a container of the power of God. The Holy Spirit and the word, they work together. You can't separate them. The more you are open to the word of God, the more the Holy Spirit will work in your life. So, the person of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, will tear down 
any physical, any spiritual mountain in your life. You need the power of God manifest in your life to see every mountain melting like wax. So the word comforter is the word paraclete, is the word advocate, the standby, the one who is who's called to be beside somebody else as a helper. So now we, we don't understand exactly the word to help as well according to the Bible. According to the Bible, help means I will do my share and you, you do your part. Let's say we have to lift up a big table together. So I need your help. So it means I will lift one side and you, you will lift the other side. But many people, they don't understand the help in that sense. People, they think that to be helped is just to sit idle doing nothing and the other person will carry out the duty. That's why I say that in this dispensation, the Holy Spirit in us and through us is still carrying on the work of Jesus Christ. If we do nothing, we won't see the help from the Holy Spirit. We have to do something so we can see the Holy Spirit fulfill his mandate in our lives. That the essence of the word comforter. So it means it is the one who gives us strength. It is the one who gives us ability. He, we will do our share. He will do his part as well. We can see this clearly in the book of Judges chapter 6. Let us go to Judges chapter 6. You will understand me better maybe. I pray that you will understand me better. In Judges chapter 6, we see the story of Gideon. So when God came to him, he said, you are a mighty warrior. You are a man of might. You are a man of valor. He didn't see himself like that. Because he said in, in verse, chapter 6, verse 15, I am the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. Can you imagine such person? I am the least among the insignificant people. If you take people who are insignificant, I am the least among them. That's how he viewed himself. But when the Holy Spirit came to him, he was able to be transformed into a mighty warrior. So the Holy Spirit will change you. The Holy Spirit will change circumstances around you. The only thing you need, you need to agree with him. You need to give him space so he can perfect his work in you. And you have to agree with the word of God, which is the container of the power of God. May God bless you. May God empower you. Please cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't stand idle. 
do something. Pray for the sick. We'll see the Holy Spirit in action. Witness for Jesus Christ. We'll see the Holy Spirit in action. You have to do. You share. And God will do his part. To Jesus be the glory. Amen.